when we imagine sea level rise, we most often think of scenes from disaster movies with giant waves rolling into city centers. It's a morally tidy vision. The young, attractive, and plucky protagonists survive. Thousands of others don't, but they're just extras. There are no difficult economic, technical, legal, political, or moral dilemmas to sort out, and it's all over in an afternoon. In the real world, we're not going to get off that easy. Our wells and aquifers are being contaminated with seawater. Our county alone, that sea uh, saltwater intrusion line continues to march ever inland. In the city of Fort Lauderdale, it's about six miles in. Everything on the other side of that saltwater line, all those water wells have been lost. One person slipped up and used the word climate change. They're not allowed to say that. The governor says, no, you shall not use. If you're a state employee and I write your check, you can't use the word climate change. The phenomenon whose name must not be said, right? That's, that's how they were referring to it. In recent years, Miami Beach has observed an increased frequency of urban flooding caused by higher tides, elevated groundwater levels, and oversaturated soils. It's often asked, can a giant seawall be constructed around South Florida, like in the Netherlands or New Orleans? No, say the experts, because of Florida's geology, made up of porous coral reef and limestone. Our ground system is porous limestone. It's a kind of um, fossilized sponge. We'll find an old photograph of a seawall, get a new photograph of it, and you'll see that the barnacles have moved up. And the barnacles and all these animals that are tied into a very narrowly defined range of sea level, they don't know science, they don't read science, they don't watch Fox News, they don't do any of that. What they do is they respond to the actual position of the ocean, and they're moving up. I remember back in the 60s and 70s, you didn't see what you see now. You didn't see at high tide streets flooding. Writer Jeff Goodell of Rolling Stone magazine has been following the South Florida story for several years. So as of now, Miami spent about $15 million to install three or four pumps in the lowest lying areas of South Beach to pump the water out when the tides are really high. Over the next decade, they project they're going to spend 400 to 500 million to install 50 or 60 of these pumps throughout Miami Beach area to help essentially empty out the bathtub when it fills up. But today's king tide will just be a normal high tide in 15 to 30 years time. How are we gonna manage that coastline and what are we gonna do with the infrastructure that goes around, that is, is in association with that? Just on the coastline alone of the United States are trillions of dollars in assets. Talk here included adaptation ideas and the possible impact to insurance rates. When the insurance companies pull out, that's gonna be the first real wake up call to people that, hey, we're not gonna be able to handle this. In all, over $10 billion in new Bayfront development with Viscane in the middle, all coming by 2020 here to Miami's $10 billion mile. Then you have problems with flooding, house insurance, people questioning, do I want to live in a place where, you know, I can be flooded out. The real estate bubble begins to break. People begin to question invest, investing in a place that doesn't have a future. How are you going to finance a project that is a 99 year lease on a high rise building that in 50 years is going to have a foot more of sea level rise. Even a rise of, of even a meter or three, three or four feet in, in, by the time my children are grandparents, um, that's a very short period of time. We're looking at a meter to two meters of sea level rise or maybe uh, four to six feet of sea level rise. That is dramatically uh, important to how we manage our coastlines. Under these moderate level sea level rise projections, we actually see places that today have minor flooding will start to have moderate flooding just with a high tide. And at the moment, it usually takes a storm, some kind of wind activity, some kind of wave action to make a moderate flood. Uh, we will be seeing that just from high tides uh, if we follow this trajectory of sea level rise projections. And that was pretty startling to us, uh, that you could have those extensive floods uh, with no storm activity. Today, um, the average subsidy for a coastal mortgage is about $2,400 a year in Southern Florida, about $72,000 a 
over the lifetime of the mortgage, going from your pocket to somebody else's pocket if their house is right on the beach. The big winners in sea level rise are going to be, wait for it, the lawyers, right? Um, there's a whole bunch of legal issues that are already happening and will continue to happen. Uh, suits against realtors, you sold me a house, uh, now they tell me that my 30-year mortgage, by the end of it, my house is not going to be worth anything, I'm going to sue you. All right? uh, Homeowners Association rules that restrict mitigation efforts, the Homeowners Association is getting sued, regulations and codes to force relocation, environmental damage from flooded buildings, so if your next door neighbor's got some toxic stuff coming out of their basement, this is a problem, you sue them. Mortgage companies are getting sued. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, unfunded mandates that are happening where towns are having to take refugees. As, as some areas become uninhabitable, they got to worry about taking them. And then malpractice, there's a whole bunch of stuff. South Florida is sort of a canary in the coal mine, it's, but it's going to be a problem that uh, every coastal community has to face.